It's time. Winner for the first take your take contest. I got to get right to it. The time constraints here. The lady, the woman who has won this contest, Miss Crystal Stone. Check her out. Stephen A, I can't believe you still won't recognize the Cowboys as the team to beat in the NFC when they've won the last nine games, including against the number one defense in the NFL. What else do they have to do? They have exceeded everyone's expectations week after week, including Jerry Jones. Ezekiel Elliott is rushing all over everybody. And just when you think you got them figured out, just when you think you're going to win, shout out Eagles. Steelers, Ravens, here comes Dak Prescott in the fourth quarter, his back against the wall. He is 20 of 22 passes in the fourth quarter over the last three games. Steve May, you might want to get a new prescription because you are failing this eye test. I'll deal with her next. I'll deal with her when she gets to Bristol. Now it's time for the fellas, the male winner of the first Take Your Take contest, Mr. Michael Goodman. Check it out. Now, Max Kellerman, I do got to give you some props. Because since you've been on the show, you have given Stephen A a run for his money. But today's argument regarding LeBron James has more pressure on him now since the Cleveland Indians lost is the worst argument you've had since you've been on the show. LeBron James has more pressure. Are you serious? LeBron James has been there two years and already brought the Cleveland Cavaliers their first NBA championship in team history. Do I have to get into how he stimulates the economy and need hundreds of millions of dollars for the Cleveland and Northeast Ohio area? Come on, man. You better than this, Max. I just want to say one thing. We had nearly 10,000 submissions, and we so appreciate everyone getting involved that they want to come in and debate you. And That's only the first take, it. your take. Doesn't have anything to do with the people that found my private emails, the private emails of producers on this show, and beyond. There were thousands upon thousands of videos that came in. And by the way, no, it's not like they just sent in one video. Folks watch multiple the show videos. every day. They sent in multiple videos. I was very impressed with the two. Especially, especially Crystal, considering the fact that she's a Cowboy fan. I was highly reluctant to not pick her, uh, to pick her at all, just based off of the fact that she's a Cowboy fan. But I couldn't deny that she was better than the other females. They took a shot, and they won the contest, and that's a big deal. Um, I, like, uh, I like him going at me. Mm -hmm. He's wrong. I will dissect him when he gets oh, here. Lord. Uh, until then, congratulations yeah. for. Uh, I hope you guys the first don't get step. embarrassed, because that will be embarrassing well, on listen, national they, TV. They, they, they want they want to come on national TV. They want a piece of the action. Let them come get it. All you right. know we don't listen. Like I said, and I'll issue a statement later for uh -huh. ESPN to put out. My congratulations to them now. Yes. My condolences oh my will gosh. come Thank later. Thank you to everyone. Speaking of prime time, our next guest has been a staple in the rap game for almost 25 years and has sold over 35 million albums worldwide, and that's really just the half of what he does. He needs no introduction. We welcome the one and only Snoop Dogg, who joins us from Los Angeles on behalf of the Snoop Youth Football League. See, Stevie A, you're not the only one who loves the kids. That's right. Snoop, Snoop really does love you. the kids. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Thank How you so, doing? so much for being with us, waking up early. My pleasure. Let's, let's talk about your Lakers, though. They're looking, oh, yeah, all, looking good. They're, they're looking all right. How far can they go this season without the Mamba? I think we can at least get into the playoffs, and that's a great start from last year, only having 17 wins. I like the way we gel, and I like the way that we looking. I just don't think that we close. You know what I'm saying? We got to learn how to close. We got to finish teams all the way off and not let them have a chance to come back. Like last night, they allowed the uh, OKC to try to creep back up on us. But I like the chemistry. I like what Luke is doing. And I feel like the, the fellas is going to figure it out sooner or later. Snoop, Stephen A here. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see what's you, up, my man. What's up? What's up, family? <laughs> now, let me ask you this question. Is, is that a little bit of emotion talking right there? I mean, because I know you know your basketball, and I know you know your football, but is that a little bit of emotion considering what the Lakers have put you through over the last few years, and you just sitting there and you feeling good right now? Is that what we is that what we hearing from you right now? I think it's 70 percent emotion. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, but but then again, I'm looking at who we beat. We beat the Warriors. We beat the Thunder. We beat the Rockets. We're not beating no, the sorry teams. We beating the teams we're not supposed to beat. Hawks too. Oh hello. I mean, we beating uh, top tier teams, even though it's the beginning of the season. But it all matters because it builds that self-esteem and that confidence and that camaraderie with the fellas that we can do it on the road or at the house. 
Snoop, when you say we need to learn how to close, it reminds me, having done, you know, Lakers radio basically for five years in L.A. just now, that Kobe fans and Lakers fans aren't always exactly the same thing. And some fans get conflicted like, damn, I really wanted Kobe to win. And without him, maybe we don't have... How much of you thinking about them closing has to do with Kobe not being on the team? Well, if he was on the team, we would have a closer. So now we're trying to figure out who is the closer. And what I like about it is that different guys are stepping into that role. You know what I'm saying? It's not a one-man team anymore. It's a, it's a full team. And we can rely on everybody, even the bench. So it's just building that character that we're going to need when it gets playoff time and when it gets later on into the season. So I'm, I'm liking what I'm looking at right now. So we'll, we'll get into you and Martha Stewart in a second because I, <laughs> I need an explanation. I need an explanation of how uh, how you in the kitchen. That's making heaven. I definitely Jesus. need to talk. I love exactly. it. I, need, I definitely need to talk to you about that. But before I do that, Snoop, I got to take a moment to dime my man Max out. I don't know if you heard what this, the blasphemy that has been coming out of this man's mouth, but he was talking a little smack about Kobe. He was talking about how Kobe had been awful the last two years. What, and, I, and, and how, and, and listen, and how all of that, listen, even if Kobe was around, it would have been a detriment to these Lakers instead of a positive. I told him other than the injuries, I don't want to hear what he's talking about. It's blasphemous. He should apologize to people like yourself, Q, and the rest of the crew for the blasphemy coming out of his Cube mouth. Cube and me already you, did this. Snoop Dogg, could you handle him, please? Could you handle him? Go ahead, Snoop. Max, I'm going to be waiting on you outside that door. You say one more thing about Snoop, Kobe Bryant. Snoop, don't, don't try to pretend <laughs> like you thought he was good last year. No, we no, all it's got what we saw. It's, it's, not, it's, not the thought of him being, it's not the thought of him being good. It's about if he wouldn't have had those injuries to go with his age, he would have still been at that level of, you know, elite. But we look at what it is is what it is. You know, Kobe had a great you know, outro season, you know what I'm saying? The record wasn't what it was about, but the love that he got from the people who he had crucified for so many years to stand up and give him love and, and respect and to appreciate what he had brought to the game. You know, the venues that he had won championships in, the teams he had broke their hearts, they all had enough pride and enough courage to give him love and respect. And on top of that, I gave him a 1966 Pontiac Parisini for 20 years of love that he gave to my community and my city. We love Kobe. He can do no wrong in our eyes. Yeah, but le by the way, let's be honest, too. They won 17 games because he was taking all the shots, and we got more draft picks because of that. Because you part, didn't have anything that was around him. Except for the time he dropped 60 the last game. That was It that wasn't was nothing around him. Now Thank we have a full you. team. Thank mm. you, Kobe, for shooting like that because you helped ah, us get our exactly. new team. We appreciate you. Exactly. Now, 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 Snoop, let me get back to you in the kitchen. <laughs> you and my, I mean, this, this, this kind of blew me away when I saw, first of all, I, 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 lo I love Martha Stewart on television. Let me be very, very clear about that. Yes, sir. And then when she hooked up with you, I said, what? What? Yes. So, so how did this come about, A, and B, do you cook when you're at home, Snoop Dogg? Do you yes, cook I'm when a, you? I'm a real chef, Steve, so what it was, we both have a lot in common. You know, I, I have kids and a wife, and I'm one of the best chefs you know, in my family or whatnot. So what it was, me and Martha, we had a lot in common, and our peoples decided to put us together. VH1 had a great idea. And, you know, our chemistry is, is magic when we on screen, and it was just a magic culmination. It was holy macaroni. Then it became holy matrimony. Snoop, you're a big NFL guy. You did that NFL show on Yahoo I participated in uh, before the Super Bowl last year. You draw up plays better than a lot of coaches for kids break down, <laughs> like, here's how you're going to score on third and three. Um, what do you think right now uh, in terms of football being in L.A.? As it wasn't the Raiders that came back, but still, you got an NFL team in L.A. What are your thoughts? I'm loving it because the city of Inglewood is a beautiful place to house this football team. The Rams have always been a, a staple of Los Angeles. The fans coming out, they're loving it. They got a pretty good defense. They just got to get their coach to stop coaching to lose and coach to well, not well make the playoffs. Because to me, he's a horrible coach at that because he coaches to not make the playoffs. Because as soon as he doesn't make the playoffs, then he wants to put in all the great players well, and give guys a shot. Oh, my Lord. Snoop. Oh, let am me I take telling the, the truth? Or oh, am you, I you, 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 you most certainly are telling the truth. But I got to hold you accountable just the same way I will hold Spike accountable about these daggone Knicks. Because if you feel that way. Are you talking about way, the Steelers? No, no. I'm saying if you feel that way, I'm talking about Spike with the Knicks, you with the Rams. Because here's my point. You in L.A., you synonymous with L.A. How the hell is Jeff Fisher still there doing exactly what you described he's doing? Why are, uh, why are Los Angeles tolerating this? Because it's called NFL. Not for long. He's not going to be doing that for long. He's going to be out of here soon because we're not liking it. And I'm a Steeler fan, but I'm from L.A., so I have to take on the L.A. stigma. But I'm looking at what I'm looking at, and it's like it starts with him. 
because if you put in Jerry Goff week one like everybody else is giving their rookies a shot, so what if he lose? You have a better chance. But now you're putting him in when the fire's already too hot. You're planning to lose. You're not planning to win. You had a playoff shot two weeks ago if you were to put him in. Snoop, speaking of the Steelers, we've been talking about how much credit or blame Mike Tomlin deserves for this year. In my opinion, Tomlin, he's my favorite coach, and he's one of the top, certainly, five coaches in the NFL, maybe top yes, three coach in the NFL. How much credit or blame does Mike Tomlin deserve for this year's Steelers team, which is not doing as well as people had hoped? I mean, when you're the head coach, you take all of the blame. That's just what comes with it. When you win it all, you get it all. When you lose it all, you take it all. And I feel like us losing Palomalo, us losing Dick LeBeau, us losing Martavius Bryant, players having issues before the season starts. There's a lot of undiscipline going on, and you have to fault the head man in charge. So if we can get all of that back in order and get the spirit of what we do, it starts from up top. Everything runs downhill from up top. So coach got to get everything back in check. Damn, and once Snoop. he does, then everything going to fall in place. Snoop, I, I can, never I, thought you go with Mike Tomlin. I can appreciate where you're coming from because I said the same thing, even though I got mad love for Mike Tomlin. But it's that damn secondary, Snoop. You and I are both it's, Steelers it's, fans. It's, that secondary I'm, drives me crazy. It's been driving I me crazy me for about you, four years. I think me and you will be better. You playing safety, me damn playing cornerback, right. and we'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> we get a whole lot of PIs, but truth. we're going to be all right. There we go. There we go. Snoop, by the way, an ongoing debate on this show is that I say if the standard for testing in uh, the NFL, you know, they're, they're in bed with alcoholic beverage companies. They sell that during the commercial breaks. Um, they're essentially business partners with them. Then they shouldn't be testing for marijuana, which is, after all, now fully legal, including recreationally in many states. If the standard is alcohol, you don't test for weed because all the studies say the same thing. Alcohol is actually worse for you than, than weed. What is your position on this subject? I'm curious. I can't imagine what it would be. My position is... NHL, they don't test for marijuana. Major League Baseball, they don't test for marijuana. And basketball and NFL, they test for marijuana. Hmm. The sports that are basically dominated by people that look like me and people that do what I do. So it seems like it's racially profiling going on because, like you said, they're in bed with the alcohol companies and whatnot. And it's not that we want you to come to work under the influence, but maybe when you're after work and you need healing and you're taking this medicine to help you with these migraines and these back pains and all of this stuff that this pills that you're taking is really blowing your stomach up and messing your mind up. So now you're taking something that's prescribed by a doctor. Maybe it's just a rubbing cream. Maybe it's an edible. It doesn't always have to be smoking. It's different ways of being treated through this medical cannabis. So I'm saying that if they're going to, you know, regulate regulate for the right reasons and find out what it is about it that makes it work before you scrutinize it and talk bad about it because it actually helps a lot of those hall of famers that have moved on from the nfl who were on prescribed drugs now they're on medical marijuana they're able to walk move better and i know these guys are my friends some of them couldn't walk and couldn't do certain things until nope. they got the medical marijuana and now they're able to be back in position to take care of their grandkids and move around and do things that they want to do. Snoop, Snoop, I'm going to holler at you. I'm going to give you the last word on this, but I get where you're coming from with that. Basically, for medicinal purposes and things of that nature, ain't no argument here. Yes. But at yes. the same time, I think that people have misconstrued the point that I'm trying to make. So I'm going to make it to my man right here, right now. If you are sitting up there for recreational purposes and, and you smoking, so we ain't for me to judge or anything like that if it's not costing you money. But when you know what the rules are, you know what the regulations are, and you know it's going to cost you millions upon millions of dollars, and you still want to go out there and smoke and knowing you're going to get yourself suspended, I ain't going to mention no names, but you know who some of the players are. How do you feel about dudes engaging in that kind of stupidity? Because Snoop Dogg ain't costing himself no money off of that, but these players are. See, Snoop Dogg don't have no commissioner to answer to. There we Snoop go. Dogg don't have no Tell people him. to answer to. I'm my own commissioner. That's but right. when you're a part of a, a brand like the NFL, when you're a part of a brand that's been around before you've been around, and they have rules and regulations in place, you have to abide. And if you don't abide, they'll just remove so you, all I'm saying. take your money, and they'll replace you, and you'll just be on the sideline like, who was he? We don't care. There's someone just like you coming. You can't control a business that you can't control. You can control you, so you must be smart while you're in the business that they control. 
So regulate yourself and know if this is what you like to do, I'm going to do it when the season is over with. So that way when they, you understand me, testing me during the season, I'm going to be cool. Let me get an understanding to where I can't do it while I'm in this business mm -hmm. and I'll do it when I'm finished with this business. How about that? That's fair. Thank you so much. Snoop, yes, I know sir. you're a slow motion this morning, but we need you to go rapid fire here. These are some fan questions. Can Let's you go. answer them for us? Let's do Let's it. Go. All right. This one is from True <laughs> Trill Swag. He asks, what made you a Pittsburgh fan and why not Raiders or Rams? 1975, me and Joe Green, I seen him on TV. I was a youngster and I fell in love with him. I loved his spirit. And then I seen the commercial where he threw the little kid his jersey and drunk mm -hmm. the Coke. I always wanted to be that little kid, so that's what it was. That'll do it. This one from Mike Wiz 39 When's the collab coming, the album with Le'Veon Bell? Oh, wow. Me and Le'Veon got a song, uh, We Got the Juice. You understand me? I'm waiting on him to drop it. Hopefully we can get our wins on the plus side before we drop the song, because I would hate to put the song out with us negative. <laughs> yeah, not the gin and juice, just the juice. All right. Yes, sir. Damon Brooks asks, is Martha Stewart as cool as she seems? Martha Stewart is cool as ever. She's one of the sweetest ladies you ever want to meet, and she's very knowledgeable in the kitchen, and she's a very great teacher. All right. Rishi K asks, out of all the Laker championship teams, which one is the greatest? Greatest championship team, I would have to say, 1987 or was it 88 when we went back to back? When Pat Riley told y'all, we'll be back, you understand me? So don't even clean the streets up. We'll be back here the same time, same place, same bad channel, same bad time. Baby Lakers on the come up there. This one from Sharon Elliott asking, does LeBron deserve to be in the NBA's top five ever? LeBron James... If he wins one more championship, he deserves to be in the NBA top five forever. By me saying that, yes, he does, because he is one of the most exceptional basketball players you ever wanted to see. I've seen him take a lot of scrutiny, and now I'm watching him become a real leader and a real you know, legend in the basketball field. So I, I respect him and I love him, so I hope he does end up in the top five. And he brought, he brought a chip to the land, and you know about uh, helping out your community, so we appreciate that. This one from George Thompson. He wants to know... What is Snoop's take on Stephen A. Smith being a closet Cowboys lover? Oh, please. Nonsense. You like the, you like the Cowboys? Hell no, I'm a Steelers low fan. Key. Well, say low that key, then. Snoop. Hello. Well, I mean, I, I would, I was despicable. You got to come out the closet. You understand me? I don't think I Stephen no A. is in the closet. Thank I you. I ain't in no closet. Trust me. God, I don't Cowboys even think he got really a closet. I think he got a uh, hallway full of clothes. You didn't mean no closet. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Listen, Snoop, I like the Versace Snoop, you're working in Snoop, your closet Snoop, today, Snoop, Snoop, before I go, let me throw this out about you and Marsha. For anybody who doubts, uh -huh. Marsha Stewart, Mar Martha, Martha, yeah. Martha, 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 yes. Martha Stewart uh -huh. on television, go to the roast for Justin, Justin Bieber, Bieber. Okay. with Snoop yes. Dogg and Martha Stewart. She stole the show. Stay it all. She stole yeah. the yeah. show. Shut it Shut down. it down. Shut it down. Shut down, it down. Down, down. And you can check out Snoop and Martha on VH1. And also, again, appreciate all you do with the Snoop uh, football Snoop league cooking. there. Snoop hey. chef. And all so you're doing my for kids. kids. going to be in that Final Four, too. They play for the Washington Huskies. They play for USC. They all over the Pac-12, man. Shout out to all my kids in the Snoop U football league. Let's get it. Get Let's it. get it. All right, Snoop, thank you so much. You the right answer about the Steelers, too. Mean Joe Green. Love you, bro. Mean Joe Green. Appreciate you, man. Right back at you, Max. All right, Steve. All right, baby girl. Y'all be sweet. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. Peace.